So for week two, what we're going to do is take a look at how to actually create a story package. So you're building on what you um, practiced a little bit with your All About Me. Uh, you're taking some of the information that you got from watching the InDesign videos. And uh, while you're expected to watch the Essential InDesign series for uh, the quizzes, uh, you certainly can also take a look at some of the other videos uh, for tips and tricks and ideas on how to further your knowledge of InDesign so that you can make your own designs look even cooler. So here's what we're doing this week. Uh, this slideshow that you're about to watch is going to walk you through how to actually create a sort of, I think, I hope, cool looking story package. I'm basically going to uh, sort of uh, show you how I would do this in InDesign uh, and walk you through the steps of sort of how to go from bland and boring to somewhat interesting. So here's uh, here's our first slide. Uh, you can take a look at the um, uh, kind of plain, boring nature of this. Uh, this was actually a story that uh, someone on my high school newspaper staff had done a couple of years ago. Uh, about our superintendent going to a different position in a different district. So the first slide just shows you a, uh, a headline uh, and a story that's not even in columns. So really this doesn't even look like a, a news magazine at all. Uh, and what we want to do is, is uh, transform it into such. So what I might do first is put this into columns. So that at least now, once you get it into columns, you've got something that looks a little more like a magazine than just a research paper. Uh, we've also added a deck here. So we've got a headline, uh, and we've got what's called a deck, which is sort of a secondary way to get someone into a story. And then you've got a four-column story that is pretty much evened up on the tops and the bottoms. Nothing spectacular yet. But what you want to do is go into your uh, text frame options in order to change the number of columns in your story from one, which is the default, uh, to something like this, which is four. Okay, so in this slide, we have taken the same four column story, we've kept the deck, we've changed the headline a little bit to make that bigger, and we've added, of course, a photo. Uh, and what's called a pull quote, which is sort of a graphic device that's used to break up text. A general rule of thumb when you're designing is that uh, if you have uh, enough story, if you have only story that you can cover your hand with, if you put your hand over the story and it touches only text, it's probably too much text. So here we've added that pull quote to kind of break things up a little bit and give the reader a little bit more of a sense of uh, not feeling overwhelmed with the text. Again, still nothing spectacular. Uh, you're going to want to find for your story uh, a photo that goes with it and certainly kind of think about what your story might be about. Um, the text is less important. You certainly can just copy and paste the text from uh, somewhere online or use placeholder text, which is an InDesign function that allows you to just place Latin uh, text so that it looks like a story. Kept the text in the four columns, we've continued with the pull quote, we've rearranged the headline a little bit, okay? and we've added some uh, contrast to this headline. So now you see with that display headline on the left hand side of the page, out with the new, uh, we have um, put this into two separate text boxes, used kind of a thinner font with the out with the part, and added a thicker, bolder font with the new part. Uh, this is something that you really want to keep in mind with all of your designs. I think contrast is one of the most important pieces to really making sure that you've got cool designs. We shifted that photo over a little bit and then changed the deck so that it's a little more of a vertical look than a horizontal. So then we thought about this a little bit more and we realized there are sort of different placements that you can do with the various elements that you've got. You notice still everything is in that rectangular shape, which I'm going to go back to again. You want to make sure that when you're, you're, you're finished with your story package design, it's in the shape of a rectangle. But we flip the picture, uh, the deck, and the headline. So now the deck sort of leads into the headline instead of being uh, after it. Uh, and everything on the bottom still looks the same. 
was just another option of that with the headline on the left and then the deck and then the photo. Just a different look. What I want you to try to think about with this is to realize that the first design that you put on the page is never going to be the best design. You want to play with the elements that you've got on the page until you've got something that you think works well. Generally, when I sit down with students and we work through these options, each one that we go through looks cooler than the one before. Uh, and it's just kind of a good lesson to sort of remember that uh, you need to kind of work with the elements, move them around, don't put the first thing on the page, don't make that be the last thing on your page. Um, until you've got one that you think works best for you. You, know, you can always undo to go back to where you were before. Uh, Command Z or Control Z, depending on if you're a Mac or PC, is one of your best friends. Uh, so feel free to undo if you need to. Okay, so now we've shifted it quite a bit from before. So we've got more of a vertical look. Uh, instead of the four column story running horizontally across the page, we've changed that into three columns and made it more of a vertical. Uh, we added some reverse text, uh, easy to do in InDesign. Uh, if you highlight uh, your text, you can change the color of your text to white. Uh, if you add a black box, then your text obviously will show up over the box. Uh, you sometimes need to position things in terms of arranging them. If your white text is under the black box, it won't show up. Uh, so there is an arrange option to bring things to front and send them to back. Um, You'll see we still continued with the pull quote. Uh, we have that as well. Uh, and uh, we changed the font to match up with the font of the uh, headline. Uh, but now we have more of a vertical look, except we've got this weird sort of L shape going on instead of a modular box. And remember, we want everything to be in rectangles once we're finished. So we've got to figure out at some point what to do with that space. But we have changed it, and this definitely gives it a different look from where we were before. So in this uh, example, uh, we decided to kind of go with some uh, reverse text uh, on not just the headline package, but also the pull quote. Uh, and it looks like that got shifted over a little bit in, the, uh, uh, in making it a PowerPoint, uh, but that should be completely over the black box. Uh, and you've got that kind of um, just sort of mirroring both. Uh, so you certainly can do the reverse text on that as well. Um, should mention uh, with the pull quote, You'll have to do some text wrapping if you want that uh, function uh, to allow your text flow in the story to roll around the pull quote. You'll have to select that pull quote uh, box and text wrap it, uh, which is a function that you'll see on your window, uh, in order to get that to flow around. All right, so let's talk a little bit about color. Uh, we've got sort of a scheme going on with the other side. Uh, we can um, work with our colors, certainly. We're just going to pretend we have a, a full options in terms of getting a full color document. Um, you'll notice in InDesign that you have, uh, generally speaking, you'll have sort of a default set of colors. There's a red and a green and a blue and a yellow, uh, sort of a basic color palette that you've got there. You're not limited to those, though. You can use any colors that you want, uh, and you want your colors to sort of make sense in terms of like having a purpose or a reason for them. Uh, so if uh, typically what you'll see is a color pulled from a photo uh, on the page to sort of make sense in terms of a color scheme. Uh, so if you think back to the All About Me spread that I had showed you before, I used some blues with the headlines because there were some um, very prominent blue shades in a couple of the photos on the spread. So that's an intentional choice that you want to think about. You have, I mentioned, um, options in terms of every color in the rainbow, anything that you want to create. Um, your colors are um, probably going to be set up in what's called CMYK, uh, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and the K is black. Um, this color scheme, if you shift those combinations of colors, you get pretty much any color you want. Your color palette, uh, if you go to File, or you go to Window, Colors, and then I would show Swatches, will allow you to create, you'll see the swatches that you have, but it also allow you to create new ones. There's a little uh, function, a like a tab key in the upper right hand corner of your swatches palette that when you click on it allows you to create a new color swatch. And then you'll see your sort of colored sliders, the CMYK sliders that you can move back and forth in order to create colors. So here in this example, we just changed the text in the headline to green, not for any discernible reason, just because, uh, just to kind of show some different colors. I'm not sure that that's the best choice. 
Uh, yellow seems a little bolder, seems to make more sense, at least on that black in the background, but also perhaps doesn't necessarily make sense in terms of a choice. That photo quality is not very good either. Uh, I think in the original it's sort of a uh, the black in the background of the photo <clears throat> more uh, sort of subtly blends into the, the black of the uh, box itself. We change this to red. Again, I think it feels bold. It seems to work well with the white. So that's a choice that seems to make more sense. I think there was originally some red in his tie as well uh, that kind of worked well with that red. <clears throat> and then here we just changed the out with the, the top part into red as well, but I don't think it stands out quite as well. So ultimately we sort of decided to switch back to the white for the top part and the red for the headline uh, to sort of make sense in terms of having an actual color scheme that we put together. We've also boxed this whole story. If you notice, we put a box around the outside of the whole thing. And then we also added in some color with the pull quote. Those giant quotation marks that you see uh, were, are in separate text boxes. If you want to do something like that, you need to create a different text box and just put a giant quote. And that's probably, I don't know, a 150 point quote mark uh, that's been then highlighted and changed to the same red. Uh, to give a sense of repetition on the page so that you've got elements that sort of connect together. Okay, but remember, of course, we still had that blank spot in the lower left-hand corner that we had to figure out we needed to do something with that. So now uh, what we've done is added a, uh, in this case, just a map graphic to sort of show uh, our superintendent in Waterford, uh, had taken a job in uh, outside of Seattle and Washington, and essentially we just added a very simple, uh, you know, United States map to show to sort of show the distance that he was traveling to his new job. Nothing groundbreaking there, but something that sort of uh, just makes sense in terms of that graphic. <coughs> Excuse me. You've also noticed uh, that now we have that out with the new headline. Uh, the new part, I think I've increased the size even further, and it's sort of leaking out into the story, which is a graphic effect that you'll see quite a bit. Uh, we've had to then text wrap the new so that the story itself wraps its way around it. So you see that as an added element. Uh, and we've also done what's called chunk the story. Chunking a story is another graphic technique that's used to sort of break up a lot of text. Uh, so you'll see about uh, two-thirds of the way down the first column, uh, there's kind of a, a, another uh, sort of secondary headline that goes in the middle of the story. And then you'll see a third one in the, or a second one in the third column at the top. Uh, and again, that just serves to sort of break up what would be, uh, generally speaking, sort of a monotonous set of text. And this is sort of our finished package. Uh, I wanted to talk about cropping photos a little bit because you'll have some access to, and, and certainly for in this case, feel free to use your own photos that you have if you're creating a, a, a story that's about you or about someone you know, uh, or just grab some photos uh, from a Google photo search to use for this. Um, but certainly when you have those, you can think about different ways to crop. So you see the photo that we were given for the story is sort of that kind of plain, straightforward, just mug shot that uh, you'll see of an administrator. And uh, we had originally sort of used it kind of as is, uh, but there's some other things that you can do with that. So you notice uh, we took in the example of the out with the new with the picture that's sort of cropped closer, uh, we took the exact same photo uh, and just uh, blew it up a little bit and cropped it very close. And this is kind of a trend you see now in photos is this close cropping to faces so that you've actually even got elements of the, the top of his head and the bottom of his chin even cropped out of the photo altogether. Uh, it gives it kind of a more dynamic look. Uh, and certainly with kind of a boring photo, you've got something that's a little more interesting to go with that. So here's how that would look uh, sort of with the text of the headline running around it. So the out with the on the top and the new on the bottom. And again, just kind of mess around with the placements of things to kind of think about how that might work. Okay, here's another example of just a different crop. Uh, you see how that photo looks completely different uh, just because of the crop. It's the exact same photo. Uh, but we've cropped out half of his face and added the headline across the top of that with the new on the bottom. So it's kind of a different look. And here, if you wanted something uh, that actually feel, feels a little more sinister, uh, you've got just, just the eyes uh, kind of peeking out in terms of the crop. Again, the exact same photo. 
but used much differently. So just some ways to kind of think about like not using the exact same photos that you've got, but thinking about how to use those photos a little more creatively in your designs. And then you can, of course, place this back into that package so that you had a finished story package. So here's what I want you to do. For this week, your assignment is to create a modular newspaper or magazine story layout. Uh, you can, I think the more details that you have in your head in terms of what this is, the better. So think about what publication this would be for. Is this for a newspaper? Is it for a magazine? If you're designing for a magazine, what magazine is it? Uh, and take a look at as many examples as you can in the professional world to sort of see what's out there to get some inspiration from your design as well. Uh, when you create this, the finished product needs to be a modular layout. In other words, it's got to be some form of a rectangle. Uh, it has to be square on all the sides. So the elements that you're working into this need to fit into whatever that square is. Uh, it certainly can be uh, uh, larger or smaller, uh, skinnier, taller, you know, shorter and squatter. Uh, it just has to be a rectangle, and each of the edges of what you're doing need to fit into that rectangle. You can't do an L. That doesn't work in design. You're not going to have a sort of an L shape with something hanging off that you can't figure out what to do with it. It must be in a rectangle. Uh, I want to see when I'm grading this one, and uh, the, the grades on the All About Me were, were basically just, did you do it? Um, I'm going to give you some critique on that, but certainly not worry too much about your um, design enthusiasm and talent level on that first assignment because we did it without knowing much about InDesign. Now that you're starting to learn a little bit more about InDesign, I'm going to be a little more particular in terms of grading you based on making sure that it looks like you've put some effort into the product. Um, so what I want to see is that you've had a sense of, of sort of reworking sort of the elements that are there. Um, that you haven't just plopped everything on the page and taken 10 minutes and finished it up. I want to see that you've, you've put some effort into this. And I created this assignment, uh, and I'm sharing this with you, to sort of work you through the steps that I'm expecting and hoping that you do when you work through this on your own. That you're really trying some different things to fit it together. Ultimately, you're just turning in one product. I'm not going to see your progress. But I do kind of want to get a sense that you've made some progress on it. In terms of what to include, uh, there's four elements that you see here that you want to make sure that you have. Uh, there should be a story, of course, uh, and again, that can be placeholder text. Um, it's probably better if it's an actual story, but certainly feel free to copy and paste it from another source. Uh, you can use more than one photo, but you must have at least one photo. Uh, and think about cropping uh, in terms of how that photo might best work for the story package that you're doing. So at least one, perhaps more if you think that makes sense for the design. Uh, I need you to have at least one graphic of some sort. So this should be an infographic, uh, a table or a chart or a map as you saw here, a Q&A, a sidebar of some sort, some sort of graphic visual element that connects to the story uh, but that you've also created yourself so that you're not just uh, finding an infographic somewhere online and plopping it on there. Um, that's okay with the photos, but with the actual graphics, you need to make sure that you've actually created that graphic yourself. So that's going to take some time to sort of design that, figure out where it's going to go. And then you need to have a headline for the package. So this could constitute, if it's in a magazine, it could be a full one-page magazine design. Uh, if you're thinking more in terms of a newspaper, this might be a story package that goes on a page, but it's got other stuff ultimately surrounding it that you're not worried about. You're doing one story and you're creating that package in a modular shape. Uh, as always, let me know if you have questions. Uh, you can email me, bwilson3560 at gmail.com. Uh, ask some questions in the Facebook group as well. Uh, there will be a week two Dropbox that you can put this in. Next week, we're going to get more into the uh, uh, specific elements of crap, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity, and start working through those to kind of use them to enhance your designs even further. Uh, so you'll have a quiz this week uh, on chapters uh, two and three of the Essential InDesign series uh, and this assignment to create a modular newspaper design layout. Good luck. Hope you do well. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.